Hey there everybody, Eric from Outer Limitless coming at you today with another video. Now in today's video I'm here to talk to you about the Hill People Gear Ute Backpack. This pack for me is quickly becoming my go-to workhorse. This bag is absolutely spectacular and if you're not familiar with Hill People Gear I strongly suggest taking a look at their website to get some more details. But this bag here is the Ute, a 60 liter pack capable of carrying significant loads and comfortably. Now this backpack is a little bit on the pricey side but at that it's one of those buy once cry once type of things. So you really do get what you're paying for and I can tell you after short term use I am extremely impressed and I'm willing to further invest into this pack system. So at this point I have a whole bunch to do and a whole bunch to share with you and if you're interested in seeing a little bit more about what I'm about to get into do me a favor stay tuned. And so yes the Hill People Gear Ute Backpack. This pack is absolutely awesome. I love this. Everything from the fact that first is it's USA made, second is the choice of materials, the fabrics, the buckles, the zippers, all the hardware. But even furthermore, the capabilities are outstanding. Everything from the harness system and the comfort while you're carrying it with load in the bag, so at significant weight, and how it just manages the load. It is extremely impressive. And this bag is a little bit complicated. It's not the most straightforward. So first thing I'm gonna say is if you think you can get this pack and just throw it on your back, it's not really gonna happen. And I'll explain why. So one of the most unique features on the Hill People Gear backpacks is their suspension system. If you look at their harness system, their, their shoulder straps, and their waist belt, and the way the entire suspension system and frame structure comes together, this is different than pretty much every other pack. I mean, obviously there are in ways similar principles, but the way they've gone about it is completely different. And the first thing you'll see, the shoulder straps. What do you do with this? It looks crazy, it looks floppy, it doesn't really look like it's attached to the bag, but ho ho ho, don't be surprised when you find out that this is actually one of the most comfortable harness systems you could possibly get, and it distributes the load on your back probably the best you could possibly ask for. And the first thing and the key to it is the fact that the internal frame structure has been set up so that it literally distributes the load down into the small of your back. So that spot right at the bottom of your back where you really want to bear the load everything translates right onto that and it sits nice and firm. And there are 7075 aluminum stays in here that can be bent perfectly to the contour of your back. That's the first thing, as well as a nice internal frame sheet. Now those aluminum stays sit down into fitted pockets that actually go onto the waist belt. So this waist belt here is called the prairie belt and this belt is nice and wide and I'd say amply padded. The thing about Hill People Gear is they've gone away from that heavy duty over padded philosophy and they've just gone with what the right amount is. You don't have a ton in the way of ventilation. You can see there's actually no padding whatsoever on the top of the bag. It's only at the bottom. Well, guess what? And guess why? Because the top of the bag isn't supposed to be touching your back at all. You should have a little bit of space. That's going to be your ventilation. If you don't have the bag touching you in the first place, why do you need ventilation? And this bag sits completely different. That's what I'm trying to say. It's not all tight and sort of like pushed up against your back and like trying to hug you as much as you possibly can. I mean, you've seen that a lot with a lot of sort of hiking, camping, and backpacking bags but no no not at all with this rather what you do is you set the harness system up to cradle properly and to sit in the proper spots and the bag just kind of hangs there it doesn't really press on you it's got a little float it's got a little give if you need to you can cinch it tight if you were getting into a situation where you were climbing and you didn't want the weight to be translating around yeah you can tighten this up but I'd say 80% of the time you're going to be carrying this bag with it a little bit loose, having a little bit of flex and give, 
nice air space behind your back and all the weight nicely translating down to the small of your back. And the parts that are on your shoulders are really these forward parts of the straps that are nice and wide and over the top with this wide yoke system. So a little hard for you to see this right now, but we'll get into it in a little more detail. Now, as you look here at detail at this shoulder system, the first thing you'll see is the way this is connected. Basically has a strap that goes down, lashes through here, and then back up to the top. So all this is really doing is giving you an anchor point, but as you can see, again, it kind of acts a little bit like a hinge, and that's the ability for the pack to move around and to give you that air space and to allow the pack just to breathe and to ride properly. And it's like suspension, right? So suspension should have a little give. It shouldn't be completely rigid. So that's the first thing, and you'll see even at that, it can slide this way. So the whole thing is made just to have some give. And at the top here, you'll see the way it's attached is with the load lifter straps. So very similar to most other packs where you have your load lifter straps. But this entire system is a yoke that goes around the back of your neck cradles down the fronts of your shoulders and makes a nice wide point of contact. And the funny thing is, again, if you look, not overly padded at all, but it's amply padded. It's just the amount that it needs and to do its job well. It's really the surface area here, the overall suspension system, and the way the bag rides that adds to the comfort, not necessarily all the padding. You do end up with a couple of extra attachment points, so if you were to use this particular harness with other bags, packs, and other parts of their system, it is compatible. And this one here is considered, if you look at the tag, to be the HPG, which is Hill People Gear 15, and it's the shoulder harness version two. So I'm not sure exactly the sort of history and if there's more than the version two, it is my belief this is the most current version, but anyway, just some of the details. Now the other thing about the Hill People Gear Harness System is you do have all the connectivity points that you need. So you have a nice quality sternum strap, perfectly placed. You actually do also end up with what's essentially bottle holders. So on your sternum strap, you'll see on both the left-hand side and the right-hand side, you end up with shock cord. And that's so you could put different things like if I wanted to carry my gloves, maybe even slip in some trekking poles. You could put in here uh, different accessories. You could put a water bottle. So nice that these are here, low profile, very simple and nicely done. And the other thing you'll notice is my ability to attach additional accessories to the straps. I always like carrying a knife and a small knife on my shoulder strap in the inverted position. So that's working very well. And I have recently been using this Peak Designs carrier for my camera. So as I hike in and I'm scrambling around, I really like the idea that my camera's mounted on my shoulder. And these straps have worked out perfect for this. So, so far, I am very impressed. Now getting into details on the Prairie Belt, you can get the Prairie Belt in a number of different sizes, so you definitely want to be careful. I got the size for roughly around the 33, 34 inch waist size. This belt is slightly, and I'm going to say slightly big for me. If it could cinch down maybe one more inch, I'd feel a little bit better about it, but it does the job and it does it well. You'll see here fully molly laden with a number of connection points all the way along. And you do connect the back side of the bag into here to help pull everything together. So this can be removed and the entire harness system can be removed to use it with different accessories and different packs. Definitely with the Prairie Belt, so that works out well. And you may use these different connection points for different reasons, adding carabiners or connecting bottle pouches and things like that. And that is one accessory I think I will probably get for this is adding those bottle pouches. So sort of like the canteen pouches for the side of this. I think it's a perfect application and a great way to go about it. So. Anyway, the Prairie Belt feels very good. Again, not too much in the way of padding, but ample. It's enough. It does what it needs to do, and it does it well. And another nice detail on the Prairie Belt, they utilize Cobra buckles. So very cool. Nice, durable hardware, good positive click, and also the ability for the forward pull, which I like. So forward pull on the straps to tighten, that's just great. 
And so as we go down through the rest of the features on this pack, you'll see everything just beautifully done from all the hardware and the buckles and how everything is laid out and connected. This bag is just amazing. And the first thing is the choice of materials. So you do have three main materials. You end up with a 1000D Cordura, 500D Cordura, and Hypalon. And those three materials, other than the straps and buckles, pretty much make up the entire pack. So the fabric choices are perfect, where you end up with a thousand D in some of the spots where you have a little more roughage and, you know, on your straps and on the prairie belt and the places where it's going to rub. Then you end up with 500 D on the rest of the bag, which is good and durable, but it does save a little bit of weight. And then you end up on the side of the pack and in some strategic locations and in all the connection points using Hypalon, which is very strong, it's lightweight, it doesn't stretch, and it does a great job. So this bag very well engineered and laid out, and the actual design of this is perfect for my needs. And so with that, there are a number of different colors that you could potentially get. It is a little confusing, and I wasn't exactly sure at first, but this, I believe, is the Ranger Green and khaki combination. There are other colors like say for example you can get into the manatee which is the gray. You can get into foliage and that's where foliage and ranger green to me sometimes are like pretty close and different companies call them a little bit different but this here again being the ranger green and khaki combination very very nice and all the other accessories that you can get are also made to color so depending on what you're looking to do and and we do have one of those accessories here we're going to get into that also in a little bit but you'll see my ability to manage on the outside of the pack very nicely so everything from attaching my tools so here you'll see i have a tomahawk i also have here i have my buck saw that's something that sometimes I struggle with packs, just the ability to nicely and effectively and efficiently attach my tools, no problem. Small tripod for my cell phone. I need that, I film, I'm a reviewer, I need my tools with me. And that includes my filming capabilities. So having that there, very, very nice. You'll also see that right on top, just some real nice straps where I can put here, for example, just a ground sheet. The first thing I do when I get to an area, I want to lay out my stuff. I want to pull out my ground sheet, lay it on the ground, and get my stuff as I take it out of the pack onto the ground sheet. That works out very well, but you could put a jacket, a bedroll, a tent. It doesn't matter. This strap system right on the top is perfect. So very nicely done. And the other thing I complain about a lot is no straps on the bottom. And that's the other thing, just right away. Perfect. Straps on top, straps on the bottom, and fully laden with straps down the side. This thing is definitely capable of carrying a lot of gear comfortably and obviously the tools. That's a bonus. Now if I had one gripe and the reason why I said I need to go to the bottle carriers is because these pockets on the side are quite shallow. For me, where I have my tools and I'm really leveraging these pockets to help me hold the tools, it does struggle a little bit in the water department. So having dedicated bottle holders on the Prairie Belt is going to be key. But you will see that I was able to fit a canteen. Now this is your typical sort of military style canteen. It does fit in there well. What I can tell you is something a little more bulky and in a different shape might not fit quite as nicely. If it's more like a Nalgene or something that's got a little more girth or diameter to it, it's going to really bulge a little bit and sit a little awkward. But these canteens do fit perfect. And I think part of the reason is the side pockets, although they're a nice size, they're not gusseted and they have no give. They are made out of Cordura material, so there's not a lot of flex and there's not a lot of give. So you don't have the ability for the pockets to expand at all. But again, they do the job and they do it well. It can hold the canteen. And more importantly for me, where you have other water options, you can use this to help you with your tool storage and management. And so now as I start to unpack my bag, getting all my gear out and really getting to the point where I can show you the rest of the features, the first thing you will notice is that as I get these straps unbuckled off of the top and removed my ground sheet, well, all of this hardware, which is pretty interesting, it's all essentially removable. Now, I'm not worried that these are gonna come off. If you look here, there's no real way for this to come off unless I intentionally unhook it. And at that point, yes, it does come off. 
But if you didn't want these and you want to shed the weight and you're not looking for the additional hardware on top, well, that's very, very cool. And these are very easy where even with me right now filming and with gloves on, I can manage the bag. And even at that, if you notice, everything is just nicely sort of cinched down. Every single strap has a nice quality webbing on it that allows you to sort of cinch it down and get rid of the slop. But the straps are long enough. I mean, look how long those straps are and how many times you could potentially uncoil that and what type of gear you could put in here. And these buckles are very, very nice. I'm not talking about like cheap Duraflex buckles. These are like the nicest Duraflex buckles you can possibly get. Listen to this click. No rattle, no movement, perfectly secure. Again, so nice. These buckles are just awesome. Phenomenally good. The hardware on this bag is ridiculously nice. So all the clips and buckles are either really nice plastic or even metal. So here you have painted metal and it's probably steel. So painted steel clips. These are not gonna bend, they're not gonna warp, they're not gonna fail. This stuff is just sturdy. So when you say you need to trust your gear, I don't care at this point that I've probably added a few extra pounds in weight all overall. I mean, could I have gotten a similar bag here at like the two and a half pound mark, three pound mark? Sure. Instead, this bag is five and a half pounds. But guess what? It's five and a half pounds of rugged and capable and bomb proof and comfortable and the features are amazing and it carries your gear well so who cares about ultra light anymore it doesn't matter if this does its job and it does its job well and the zippers nice and beefy just large zipper tracks you'll see I mean that zipper is about the size of my pinky finger in overall size so very nicely done and you'll notice that it is underneath a storm flap so that Cordura material going to do a nice job to help protect that and as we get into it and opening this up you'll see these move with ease very nice to get into your contents and this is fully a top loading bag so that's the thing is it is a fully top loading bag which I do like I like top loading bags very very much I've actually kind of naturally gravitated towards a roll top design but I do like the fact that this is top loading and the fact that it's not a roll top actually works quite well so now here continuing on the side of the bag here you'll see these compression straps now these are the same exact compression straps as along the front of the bag but as we disconnect it here you'll notice that you do have intermediate connectivity and leveraging these metal connectors well again you can unhook that and get it out of the way and this gives you the ability to either bring this all the way around the front connect it to other packs connect it to different pieces of gear leverage these particular connectors in a number of different ways and again i'll show you that but this system is really really cool and the other thing it lets you do is have multiple zones and areas to manage your tools and equipment and so here as we connect this back up what you'll see very easy goes on no problem goes around connects to the front and when we need to when we cinch this up essentially what we're doing is we're cinching up both the side and the front at the same time so it is a little tricky what i found is undoing that ranger band there if this was loose you'll notice this entire thing starts to loosen up gives you the room that you need but when i go to tighten this up when you pull this you kind of pull forward and that takes a lot of the slack out centers your buckle in the front of the pack and gets you the proper tension and then from there kind of roll this back up and again you can see even though I'm wearing gloves I'm still capable of doing most of this work reasonably effectively which is nice and there you go so this works out very well the compression straps on this bag are absolutely amazing and so now as I remove the rest of my gear again to remind you this is a 60 liter pack 
So I'm using it today for a, I'd say just, you know, a day out in the bush and doing some filming. So I brought some essentials with me, um, but a 60 liter pack, a nice size, probably bigger than you need for most day excursions, but for me, it's working very well. And this bag can definitely be cinched down, so not a big deal. But as I open the lid, one thing you will notice is this little molly field. And I have found that for me, this is a great place to just attach my med kit. So between the gear that I have on the inside and outside, so you'll see in here just a basic pocket, um, but between inside and outside some of my essentials. So in here, I have some fuel for a stove. I have my coffee, because I'm gonna have myself some coffee in a little bit. I have a fire kit, so as I reach in and slide it out, just my basic fire kit there. But then again, out here on the outside, I have my medical supplies, and that works out extremely well, where in a pinch, you can open the bag up, get it open, and get to your medical supplies right on the top of your pack, so I like that. And so as we pull the top cover, out of the way, here you'll see this is the internal frame sheet. So in here, behind this, you end up with those aluminum stays coming up into the top of the pack. Then you have your plastic frame sheet, which helps add just a little bit of rigidity. And then you end up with these three tabs on top where you could attach hydration bladders, carabiners, just hang gear, very nice. And this pocket here is big enough that you could fit a substantial water bladder. I'd say at least a three liter water bladder in there with no problem hanging it off of the top of here to help suspend it. And you do end up with a hydration port. So right up in the top here, a little bit hard to see, but yes, you do end up with that hydration straw port. So nicely done, well laid out, well thought through. Just the engineering again on this bag is phenomenal. And so now that I'm into the inside of the pack, I'm not gonna pull all my contents out of here because it doesn't really do us any good. The entire inside of the bag is literally just one cavernous 60 liter open vessel. So, you know, no real pockets, no real subdivision other than the one main pocket in the back for the hydration bladder. So we'll leave it at that. But some things that I did bring, for example, you know, you'll see I brought a wool blanket, some warmer gloves. It is quite cold today. I brought a bunch of cooking gear and the ability for me to relax today, make some coffee and just enjoy my time out here. So I'm not going to take all the contents out but again, just enough stuff to sort of fill the bag and give me my needs while I'm out here today. Now there's not a lot of cons with this backpack, but if there was a con, and, it, and it's really probably just a matter of me getting more used to this, the only con is really my ability to actually get the bag on. It's a little difficult and Again, just bear with me for a second. It's the fact that yes, these shoulder straps are kind of floppy and they're not rigid and they're not at the top of the pack. So what I found is I really need to grab my grab handle, get one of the straps, sling it around. And you can imagine with a 65 liter pack, this could be at times quite heavy, especially with a full backpacking kit. So then at that point, I really need to get my other arm in and all the weight of the bag is bearing on this shoulder. And it's my job now to get this other arm in. And as you look, unfortunately what happens is the strap often gets kind of caught up. So you need to like fish it out, straighten it out, slide your arm in, spin it around because it does get twisted up and at that point you're good. And the other thing I found is if I'm not careful, you'll notice I fully loosened this up knowing I was going to put the bag back on. If this is partially cinched down, it can be quite difficult to get your arm in there. But once the bag's on, it's a joy. The way you fit this up, and again, I'll go back to the fact of, if you think you're gonna buy this bag and just put it on, you're wrong. You need to spend at least a couple hours with it, getting it properly adjusted. You probably wanna load this up ahead of time with stuff that you think you'll be bringing on a typical trip and get the bag dialed in. 
you really need to put the weight in the bag. You really need to take the time to tweak this because if it's not right, it's not gonna carry right and it's not gonna be comfortable. The yoke system is great, but if you don't adjust it right, it can ride too high or too low. That won't translate the weight the proper way. And if you don't get your harness and you don't get everything kind of dialed in, it really doesn't work. So this bag is, I would say, a little bit on the technical side. It's not like overly complicated. It's not like anybody can't do it. All I'm saying is if you think you're going to take this bag and throw it on and go crush miles in the mountains, you're wrong. So take the time up front to set it up. Enjoy the bag. Take your time. Practice in a controlled situation so that when you need to get out there, you know what you're doing. Because again, it can be a little bit tricky. And so as I mentioned, there are a number of accessories that can go on the outside of the ute. Here I have the PALS pocket. Now there's also an admin pocket and there's the Terra pocket and actually a couple of the backpacks that can be adapted to the outside of this. If they're the smaller backpacks, they're made to fit the larger backpacks, which is cool. But here again, this is the PALS pocket. And very simple, you'll see on one side, here you have laser cut molly. On the other side, just a simple bag. Now again, this is in Ranger Green, so color coordinated with my ute. And on the inside here, pretty cool. First thing is, it's just a nice large pocket. But you'll see here, you have a mesh pocket on one side, and then the entire inside here is Velcro lined, and again, that laser cut molly. So this is highly, highly customizable on the outside of your pack. So if you wanted to have like a full trauma kit, you could do that. You could put, for me, it's gonna be perfect. I'm gonna put my map on the outside and this is gonna be full of my food. I'm gonna have all my food on the outside of my pack, easily accessible. If you had a slightly larger volume of gear that couldn't all fit on the inside, well, this is another option too. So this mounts up very nicely and utilizes the hardware on the ute as well as the tabs here on this PALS pocket. And so if you're interested in seeing in more detail how this PALS pocket connects to the ute backpack, I will be doing a follow-up video on this. It'll be its own sort of standalone little quick tips and tricks on utilizing the ute. We'll get into it in a little more detail, but for today, I think that was a pretty good overview, covered the overall quality, the capabilities, the comfort. I mean, there are a lot of great things that come with not just this ute, but the Hill People Gear brand. I am quite impressed. I'm extremely happy to have gotten my hands on this pack. It's amazing. It's gonna be, again, my workhorse. This is what's gonna do the bulk of my work. Now, of course, being somebody in the review and gear genre, I am gonna try other packs, so I'm gonna have to, but every chance I get, I can tell you this is gonna be the one that does the work. It's what's gonna carry my gear and my camera gear and all the things that I'm going to review out into the field on typical days like today. It's gonna to get me up into the mountains. This is gonna do a bulk of my work. So again, buy once, cry once. You're gonna pay a little more money up front, but you absolutely 100% get what you pay for. This pack's amazing, I absolutely love it, and I can say I definitely, definitely, highly recommend it. So all right guys, thanks for stopping by. I hope you liked what you saw. I hope you found that a little bit informative. If you like what you saw, please like, share, and subscribe. And as always, thanks for stopping by. Take care now, I'll see you soon.